Okay, now we have May, uh, June 2017, M1 IAL, a question about vectors and resultant vectors. Here we have two vectors, P and Q, two forces, P and Q, act on a particle. This is about forces and resultant forces. The force P has a magnitude 8 newtons. Okay, there's 8 newtons here. And Q has a, has a magnitude of um, 5 newtons. So this is 8 newtons. And this is 5 newtons. Now, the way they've drawn it here, for us to deal with vectors properly, we should really draw the, the, um, the forces from, you know, like head to tail. So basically, you've got force P acting like this, and then force Q should be where P ended. It should start with P ended to find the resultant. So what I'm going to do is, so something I've prepared earlier, is I've actually, whoops, let me just lock this in place. What I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to change the diagram such that your Q is now going to be drawn where Q starts where P ends. I could have done it the other way. I could have put Q over here if I wanted to. Okay, where where Q ends, P starts. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw join the beginning and end together like this. So this is like the force P. This is like the force Q. Okay, so this 8 newtons is now there. That's P, 8 newtons. And the 5 newtons is here. Okay, so that's one way we can deal with this. All right. Now, what we have to realize here is that we could do it that way. That's, that's acceptable. That angle there would be 50 degrees here. If I drew a line, if I drew a straight line, like this that's horizontal that's parallel to this so that angle would be 50 here so this angle would be 130 because the angles on a straight line okay we could do it that way or if alternatively if you wanted to we could just where um, draw it like this if you wanted to instead which is probably a bit easier to think about so here you have eight Newtons and here you have your five Newtons okay this is your Q here Okay, this is your Q. We don't worry about this now. Okay, this is 130. That's also a similar kind of thing because you, you've got Q and then you've got your force P, which is 8 Newtons. Q and then P. The, the point is, when one of them ends, the other one must start. So let me just do a fresh diagram, get rid of all of this. And underneath I'll do the diagram so it's clearer, okay? So basically, what we need to do is redraw it so that you have when one arrow when the the tail is drawn at the end of the arrow so you draw your direction of your first force for example q first that's force q and instead of drawing p like this okay let me just put the arrow clearly there instead of drawing p from the tail of q so we draw um q over here and what I'm going to do is, where Q ends, I'm going to draw P. So Q is your force of um, 5 Newtons. And now where Q ends, that's where we draw P. Okay. So now this is your force P. Okay, so we're drawing this where Q ends. And I know that this angle here, is 50 so this angle here is 130 now I'm going to join the tail of the start to the head of the end okay that's the resultant force this is the resultant force okay where the tail of the first force uh, where the where the arrow of the first force ends the tail of the second force starts and the resultant is where you started from to where you ended so we have a triangle here it's not a right angle triangle but we know uh, some of the dimensions here. So I know that this is 8 Newtons. So let me just um, get rid of some of these things so we can see clearly. This is 8 Newtons and this is 5 Newtons and this is R and this is 130. We can actually use what's called the cosine rule to find this because it's a non right angle triangle. And we know the cosine rule states A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cosine A where 
the small a is the side you're trying to find, and, and the big a is the angle opposite it. So we have here the opposites and the two sides that make the angle. So we can find um, r. So r is going to be the square root of, you're going to have 5 squared plus 8 squared, minus 2 times 5 times 8, times the cosine of 130 degrees. Okay, so then we can work out what r is. So we take out our calculator and we work it out. Or is, why does it not want to move? There we are. So we have the square root of 5 squared plus 8 squared minus 2 times 5 times 8 times the cosine of 130 degrees. And that gives us our answer 11.850. So you have 11.850. So therefore, R to three significant figures is 11.9 newtons. Okay? That's part A and part B. Pretty simple as well. To find to the nearest degree the size of the angle between the direction of P and the direction of R. Okay, so uh, this is, um, let's remember here, P is, this is P and this is R. So we're going to find the angle between those. That is the angle between them. Okay, you can see the angle between them. Like if you continue this line across and you continue that line across. The angle between them is this angle over here, which is the same as this angle here. All right, let me call it angle X. We can actually use the sine rule to find it. Okay, we can use the sine rule. We know that the, the sine of X over the, the side opposite it, which is 5, is equal to, uh, we can say, the sine of 130 over the angle opposite it, which is R, which was 11.8502 before we rounded it. So to use it in more accurate form is better. Okay, so we can find what x is. x is going to be inverse sine of 5 times the sine of 130 over 11.850. I'll put it in more accurate form to keep accuracy in our answer. So we take um, 5 times sine 130 divided by our answer. So 5 sine 130. Okay, divided by our answer, and then we're going to press inverse sine of that, and that will give us our answer, hopefully, 18.85 to the nearest degree, so 18.85, dot, 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 so the angle we need is equal to 18.9 degrees, uh, sorry, to the nearest degree, that's 19, isn't it? That's 19 degrees, as required to the nearest degree. Okay, and there we have question 7 finished. Thank you for watching.